Welcome one and all to another combat patrol painting tutorial and in this one we're going to be painting the mighty Xenos hunters themselves the Death Watch. Now in the Death Watch combat patrol box you receive a lieutenant, you receive an apothecary, you receive 10 intercessors and three aggressors. Now what we're going to be doing for the purposes of this tutorial is we're going to be painting up five intercessors and all three aggressors. I'm not going to do the whole 10, and that is just for the sake of speed. But you'll be able to use any of the techniques that you learn in this video across the entire set, and indeed any of the rest of your Death Watch collection. These models have all been primed with grace here, and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to turn this into this. So the place we're going to start on our Death Watch combat patrol is of course with all of that lovely black armor. Now, as I think I've already said, these models are all primed with gray sear. So what we want to do is we want to darken this right down, but instead of going straight in with black templar, we are going to be doing Leviathan blue. And we're going to start this on the Lieutenant. So we're just going to move these guys out of the way, just in case we have any unfortunate accidents. So, one thing to point out, in fact, actually, just before we get started on it, is that the Apothecary, whilst typically in most Space Marine armies, he would be white armoured. In a Death Watch army, he is still armoured in black. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take our medium layer brush and we're going to get our Leviathan blue. We're just going to take a small amount of this on our brush and we're going to start coating this over all of those armour plates, excluding his left arm, or in our case, the right arm, looking at him. But to him, it's his left arm because this is a death watch arm. And as you can see on the box art, their arm is always silver. So we're just going to do all of the armor except for that arm with this Leviathan blue, like this. And you can be a little bit messy with this, it doesn't have to be 100% smooth. So don't worry if you get few streaks and blobs here and there because we are going to be covering over this very shortly but it's always a good practice just to try and get it as smooth as possible just by doing these big broad brush strokes and taking it a section at a time and just use the brush to mop up any excess that you don't want on the model. And also similarly, any details like that bit there on the shin guard that you don't worry a little bit, don't worry too much about getting any of this contrast paint on that at this stage, because we can always neaten it back up with some gray sear. And so with that Leviathan blue applied to all of these Death Watch fellows, what we are going to do now is we're going to darken it right down with some Black Templar. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a small amount of Black Templar, not loads, because we're going to have a fair bit of control as we do this. And what we're going to do is going to just apply this over the top of that Leviathan blue. Now, where possible, if you can, try to avoid the edges, but it's not absolutely crucial at this stage because well, it's very tricky to do on some of these models and the highlight that we're going to be adding is quite bright. So whilst it's useful to not hit all of the edges whilst you're doing this, it's absolutely not the end of the world if you do. Because if you use a small amount of Black Templar as you do this, it actually it, it, it retains some of that Leviathan blue edge anyway as you do this. So try not to drown the model. Anyway, we want to go over all of this Leviathan blue like this, and then we're going to come back. And with that done, what you should have now is a really lovely kind of midnight black armor with a blue tint to it, which just looks perfect for the Death Watch, as you can see, like that. So what we're going to do now is we are going to paint in their Aquilas and their silver arms. And the colour that we're going to be using for that is some thinned down iron hand steel. What you want to do is 
just grab a fair whack of this on your brush and just start painting this all over with reckless abandon like this you want to be a little bit careful when you get close to the guns and things we just want to get this all over their shoulder pad their left arm and the aquila on their chest now the apothecary doesn't have an aquila on his chest because it's covered up by his pajamas just want to get this done like so And so with that done, what we now want to do is shade all of that iron hand steel with some Basilicanum Grey. So we just want to be very careful here so as not to completely overwhelm the metal. So what we want to basically want to do is just get that definition and all the recesses like that. over here could be fairly liberal on the shoulder pad desperately just want to make sure that we've picked out all of the letters in the shoulder pads And so with that done, what we're now gonna do is before we do any highlights on those metallics is we're actually now gonna just kind of finish off painting in all the base coats. And this is a great place to continue kind of trying to finish off that armor. Now, the biggest thing that we haven't done yet is of course their right hand shoulder pad. And this is because these are all completely different across the Death Watch. They are effectively the chapter colors from whence these Space Marines came. So at this point, you can do them as whatever colors you like, but um, I'm gonna demonstrate a couple. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the aggressor. And we're actually gonna make him be a dark angel. So the color that we want to use for that is dark angels green. So what we're gonna do, give that pot a good shake. And then we're gonna grab our medium layer brush I'm going to start painting this Dark Angel's green all over the inside of that shoulder pad. Now it doesn't matter too much if we get this on the trim, because we can always deal with that a little bit later. We're just going to keep, make sure that we get the whole of the inside. Like this. Again, not worrying too much about getting it on the design there. Just gonna always neaten that back up with some grace here. There we go. Lovely stuff. So that's our Dark Angel done. I'm gonna put him to one side and wash the brush. So next up, I'm gonna grab some Blood Angels Red. I'm gonna use this to paint in the shoulder pad of the Apothecary, because he is gonna hail from the Blood Angels. So once again, we grab that Blood Angels Red, and we just start painting that all over the inside of the shoulder pad.
like this. Next up, I'm going to paint this guy. Now he is going to be a salamander. So what I want to do here is I want to grab my warp lightning. And I'm going to use this all over the rim of the shoulder pad. And then afterwards, I'm going to paint the inside of that shoulder pad black. Like that. And then lastly, for our left turn, he's going to be an ultramarine. So the colour we're going to use here is ultramarine's blue. We want to use this on the inside of that shoulder pad. And so for our salamander, what we're going to do is, as I said, is we are going to paint the inside of this shoulder pad black, but we're not going to do it in the same kind of cool black as the rest of the armor. We are going to do this in a slightly different black. Now the color that we're going to use first is Basilicanum Gray. We want to use this all over the inside of the shoulder pad. And next up for our salamander, what we're going to do is we're going to grab some black Templar. And we're going to use this all over the top of that area that we've just painted in with the Basilicanum Grey. And so with our salamander done, what we can do is just put him to one side for a second because what we're going to do is we're going to finish off our ultramarine. Now to finish him off, what we're going to do is we're going to use some thin down retributor armor. I'm going to use this to paint in the rim of his shoulder pad, as he is very, very proud of the fact that he is from the second company, the ultramarines. Now what we can also do at this point, just to save some time, is we can use the retributor armor to paint in the rest of the gold details. Seeing as we've now got it thinned down on our palette, so on this ultramarine here, on this lieutenant, we're gonna paint in areas like this little thing hanging off here, the laurel and skull on his shin guard, the center of his aquila and his laurel wreath, the decorative areas on his sword, as well as the skull bits on his gree, on his whatever those are, his arm guards and this gold bit here. Similarly, on areas such as our Dark Angel Aggressor, what we're going to do is we're going to use this gold to paint in those gold details on his hanging bits as well, as well as the skull on his Aquila in here, and here, and this bit here, and also Actually, I should point out we're going to do it on here as well. On our apothecary, we're going to paint in gold details on him as well. So we want to paint in the skull on his shoulder pad, like that. We also want to paint in 
tops of the vials of gene seed up here, including the little runic markers there, similarly on this one, and down here on this, this area like that, and on our, go away Siri, <laughs> on our intercessor, we're going to paint in the little skull here, the skull and bones on his shoulder pad, as well as the areas on his combat blade, and on the decorative features of his scabbard. And so with all of those gold details applied, as you can see, we've done it across all of our guys. There we go. And here as well. What we're now gonna do is we're gonna use some Flesh Terrors Red. I'm gonna use this for all of the weapon casings. So for example, here on this guy's pistol, that's a slightly too big a brush for that. We want a small layer brush rather than a medium. So on this guy's pistol, what we wanna do is we wanna grab our Flesh Terrors Red and we wanna paint in the casing. And the reason we're doing it in this order rather than doing the metallic first is because, well, it's just a lot easier to paint the silver on after you've done the casing than it is to try and paint the casing after you put the silver on. There's actually quite a lot of kind of additional silver details that we've got to paint in as well. Um, so we'd rather do all of that at once rather than have to keep going back to using Iron Warriors. So we're just painting in casing of this pistol. Like this. Making sure that we're getting the whole thing done. Like so. Similarly, on the aggressor, what we want to do is we want to use this flesh terrors red to paint in the casing parts of the flamers. So this is going to be this little section here that doesn't have any paint on it currently. Like so, we want to do that on both the flamers. And what we can also do, we can also use this as an opportunity on any models that have one. On the purity seals for the wax seal, we can use a small amount of flesh terrors red just to paint that in, as well as the casing on the weapon. So with that flesh terror is red applied, what we are going to do actually is we are just going to pause quickly on doing everything because what we want to do is we want to paint in the apothecary's cloak. Now the color we're going to use for this is blood angels red and the reason we're doing this now is because well there's a lot of kind of little silver and leather details around and well we want to get the kind of main bulk of the cloak done first or the shawl or whatever you want to call it his robes uh, we want to get the main bulk of that done before we do any of the rest of the details. And a lot of the details that are left are kind of consistent colors for the rest of the set. So we're just gonna use this Blood Angels Red like this, using a fair amount of it on our brush and just painting in these nice big broad brush strokes, going from top to bottom in each section to establish our red color first. Like so. Now you just want to do this on this kind of outward facing bit of the cloak. For the inside, that's going to be a slightly different colour. Don't need to worry about that just yet. 
it's just this part here that we're worrying about. And this little section here where the tools, you can see, they are actually in a little pocket on the robe. So we also want to paint those in red as well. Like that. Now the little blades themselves, you can actually just leave those for now. So those are going to be silver, not red. So it doesn't matter too much if we get any Blood Angels red on here, because we can just easily cover over those with some Iron Warriors. Now what you'll see here on this top part of the rope, is you can see the little leather straps hanging off around his neck. And so that's what we want to be really careful of. Is if we can try to avoid them, that's perfect. But if you do get any on here, again, just neaten it up with some grace here because those are going to be a different colour. You see what I mean about if we painted those in first, you'd have a bit of a problem. So we'd have to avoid them with the red. Doing it this way just makes it a lot easier. And with that done, we're now going to highlight that cloth. And the colour that we're going to use is Evil Sun Scarlet. So I've got some thin down on my palette. I'm just going to take a really small amount of this. I'm just going to start picking out all those edges. On the cloth. Now you could at this point highlight Things like the the casing on the weapons. However, because there are still kind of things like, um, like the mechanical parts with the silver to paint in, it's best to just kind of skip it for now and come back to that bit a little bit later on once we're ready to do kind of the wider highlights. The reason, as I say, that we're just doing this now is to make things a lot easier for ourselves going forwards. And with that done, what we're now going to do is use some Fire Dragon Bright just on the sharpest points of this tabard. Like this. to give it the impression of the light catching off the cloth. And then next up, what we're gonna to do to finish off all of this tabard cloth thing is we're gonna create a roughly six parts contrast medium to one part flesh terrors red mix. And we're gonna use this over all of the top of that red, that evil sun scarlet, and that fire dragon bright, just to blend all of those colors together to add a little bit more depth and kind of richness and vibrancy to all those colours. As you can see, because it's quite messy, this is one of the many reasons why we did this now. So after you finish this, just go back and kind of neaten up all the areas that you might have splodged on with some grace here once again. And you can also use this as an opportunity to kind of neaten up any of the grace here areas that you need to at this point across all of the mo models. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to start colouring the rest of the base coats. So the color that we're going to start with is Wildwood. And we're going to be using this to paint in all of the leather details. So these include any holsters, any pouches, and any belts and cable ties and things like that you might have across your miniatures. So for example, here on the Lieutenant, we've got his pistol holster just here on his belt. And 
as well as those pouches there on the back and of course his belt itself. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to colour in the rest of the silver details. And the colour that we're going to be using for that is some thinned down iron warriors. So we're going to demonstrate first on this aggressor, because he's got quite a lot of extra silver details. And so what we want to do is we want to take that iron warriors, and we're just going to start, pick a place to start. And so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to colour in the rest of the, the, the trim of the shoulder guard with this iron warriors. Because whereas traditionally with a dark angel shoulder, it would be a green trim. We want to really firmly part this guy in the death watch. So you just want to do that whole area like that with the iron warriors, including the rest of the trim. So this bit down here and around there. What we also want to do on this uh, aggressor is you want to paint in the large metal tubing. Around here, we want to paint in this area of the backpack. Select like the fuel canisters. We want to paint in with that, as well as the kind of cables on his back and any of the other areas on his about his person that you wish to be silver. Similarly, on our lieutenant, we want to colour in areas like the sword blade, the areas on the backpack, the working areas of his guns, like that. And on the apothecary, we want to colour in all the areas on here that we want to be silver as well. Similarly, on the intercessors as well. And with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some skeleton horde to paint in any of the parchment, as well as this guy's interior of his tabard. Let's go with that. So we take the skeleton horde and we just start painting it over areas like the paper parts, parchment parts, I should say. these purity seals here like that and also on the cloth we don't want loads of this on our brush here we just want to in a nice big broad brush stroke just kind of pull that all the way up like that to get a nice smooth finish Similarly on the back here. What we're also going to do is use the skeleton horde on the skull on his belt. Like that. A little bit more parchment here. Like that. Oh, missed a little section. Like 
similarly on the intercessor, what we're going to do is paint in the parchment of his purity seal like that. On our lieutenant, put the little bones in here, colour those in, as well as the parchments. And with that skeleton horde applied, well, our intercessor has got all of his base coats applied now. So what we are going to do is going to pop him to one side for now. And we're actually now going to focus on just getting all the base coats done on the aggressor because, well, He's got some individual details, the apothecary's got some individual details, and so does the lieutenant. So we're just going to go through them one by one. Now the first colour we're going to use is Flesh Terror's Red. And this is going to be for all of the smooth cables coming out around the Flame Storm Gauntlets. So we're using these nice big broad brush strokes. Like this. And with that done, what we now want to do is use a small amount of Blood Angels Red. This is going to be for all of these ropes hanging off of our aggressor. Be really careful around that iron hand steel. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to paint in the barrels, muzzles of the flamers, of Flamestorm Gauntlets, and also this little area here, which is currently black. Um, I didn't realize, I looked at the uh, looked at the box art, and I can see that this little casing here, not this bit on top, but this bit here, is also gonna be the same brass color. And the color that we're gonna be using is Rune Lord Brass. So we just wanna take some of the, load up our brush, and we just wanna start painting this all over these sections. So we've got, as I say, we've got the muzzles, or barrels. I really don't know what these are called. Flame housings. I should really look this up next time I'm doing a unit that involves flamers. And with that done, what we're now going to do is going to paint in his face, and the colour I'm going to be using is wildwood. Just want to maneuver it around so that I'm not getting it all over the hair. Just being a little bit careful around all of that black and silver that we haven't shaded or highlighted yet. But if we do get some on there, we can always neaten it up. Just want to make sure you get it all the way around, like so. And so with that done, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Basilicanum Grey. I'm going to use that to paint in his hair. like that and so with that done the base coats on all of our aggressors so this guy and the other two that i'm currently painting are now finished so what we're going to do is pop into one side i'm going to grab up our primaris lieutenant now there's not a lot left to do on him but the first color we are going to use is apothecary white and we're going to use this on the beads the rosary beads perhaps that's what they are we're going to use them on here use this apothecary white all over this like this and next up we're going to use some volupus pink and this is going to be for the grip on his power sword
And so with that done, that's, well, that is all of the base coats on our Lieutenant for now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop him to one side and we're now gonna pick up our Apothecary. And we're gonna still stick with the Volupus Pink just for a second, because what we are gonna do is we're gonna use this to paint in the progenoid gland that he's holding in his hand. Like this. Then with that done, we're now going to use some black Templar and we're going to use this to paint in the casing on our little chainsaw medical implement up here. We're going to use it to paint in any of the ribbed cables that you can see. So there's one there up on this, on this servo arm. And there's one here on the arm. Like this. Let's take that little bit off there so it's a bit more smooth. Similarly on this little casing here, I'm going to use this black Templar. cables like so and then with that done what we're also going to do is we're going to paint in the little handle on his light down here, this little gizmo on his belt, just going to paint this all over, don't worry if you get it on the screens, we're going to be doing dealing with that very shortly. going to do is we're going to use this black templar just to paint in the skull and the wings on his shoulder pad and with that done what we're now going to do is we're going to use a mixture of blood angels red and warp lightning and well, when I say a mixture, what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate the colors basically because we're gonna paint in all of the smooth cables. Now it's entirely up to you what order you do this and how much you uh, choose to mix it. But these are the two colors that we're gonna use. So the first one I'm gonna use is Blood Angels Red. And I'm gonna use that on this smooth cable just up here on the servo arms. Like so. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to use this Blood Angels Red on this little kind of vial section that runs across the middle of the doodad here on the front. Like so. And I'm also going to use the Blood Angels Red on these smaller cables just down here. Which are the easiest ones to miss. Like that. 
I'm going to wash the brush. And I'm going to grab some warp lightning. I'm going to use this on all of the remaining ones. So we've got one here on his arm. Just want to paint this warp lightning over the top of. Like that. And similarly, we've got these ones up here. And next up, what we are going to do is we're going to use some thin down Corax White. And we're going to use this in a couple of different ways. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our Corax White and on his new pad under here, we're just going to very carefully start that again. And so next up, what we're going to do is we're going to use some thinned down Corax White. And we're going to use this in a couple of different ways. The first thing we're going to do is on his left knee pad, we're just going to colour in that flat area with this Corax White. We just want to be really careful now as we do this. Now it might need a couple of coats. Or if you've been smart and you've looked at your box art, you wouldn't have coloured it in black, as I have. We go and probably do the second coat and we'll come back to that in a minute. What we're also going to do on this part here, the central dome of the backpack, where you see that little Medicaid symbol, we're going to once again use this Corax White to just colour in that section as well as the little Medicaid symbol as well. Now there's a couple of these symbols all over the model, don't worry about colouring over them with this Corax White because we want to use this as the highlight colour for those but for these sections we want these to be a nice bright white. And with that done what we now want to do is we want to use some apothecary white and we want to use these on the smaller white details as well as the one on the back. We don't need to do anything on that knee pad because well it's done so just take the small amount of apothecary white and just over the top of this little area here for example we're just going to paint it over like that just to get some shading in those recesses around the icon. Similarly, on the forehead, a little too much on my brush there. A little bit like that. And we've got one here on the shoulder pad. Like that. And then similarly on that back piece there, around that little icon, just want to add this over the top, just to add that shading around it. It is going to be a different colour in a minute. Like that. So with that apothecary white applied, what we're now going to do is going to take a small amount of Blood Angels Red. I'm going to use this on the little Medicaid symbol on his backpack, just here, over the top, like that. And that apothecary white is applying the shading for us. Now don't worry if it looks a little bit darker than you would expect, that's okay because we can highlight it back up because it's such a small detail, the highlights will really make it pop. And so with that Blood Angels Red applied to that Medicaid symbol on the back, what we're going to do now is we are going to start working on all of the miniatures once again. Now I know there's a couple of details we've not finished on the Apothecary just yet, that's okay, it's because, well, we're going to need to do some iron hand steel highlights to the metallics and what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of color in all of those uh, kind of shiny gems and lamps and things and then we're going to use the contrast over the top of it to make them extra bright and glittery so what we are going to do now is we're now going to start shading all of those metallics and the color that we're going to be using first is basilicanum gray we're going to be using this on all of the silver 
So what we want to do, just take a little bit of this on our brush. We just want to go very steady because we don't want to overload any of these details because then we'll lose all of that lovely silver color that we've already put in there. And also we might lose some of the detail if we use too much paint at once. So just want to kind of go back to the pot little and often. You just want to take it very steady around any of those kind of bright colors that you've already painted. And this is just going to be on the silver for the majority of the guys. Whereas, for example, on the aggressor, what we're going to do is we're going to paint this all over those rune lord brass bits that we painted as well. Now I must stress, because we've already used this Basilicanum Grey over that iron hand still that we originally did on the shoulder pad and on the arm, you do not want to hide, shade that once again. So you just want to do it on all of the metallics that haven't been shaded just yet. Like this. And with all that Basilicanum Grey applied, what we're now going to do is we're going to use some Fire Slayer Flesh. And we're going to use this to shade all of the gold details. And so concludes part one of this Death Watch Combat Patrol tutorial. I've painted a lot of Death Watch in my time. Um, a lot of it was before contrast paints came along. Um, so these are my first time outing with the contrast paints on them and I think they look stunning. I really love this blue black armor that we've come up with with the Leviathan blue and the black Templar. And well, it's really, really effective and I think it perfectly captures that Death Watch vibe. If you enjoyed this one and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all of that good stuff. And if you'd like to stay up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.